Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan, and today I want to talk about a very special material, one of the strongest materials in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Vibranium. We're going to look at what makes Vibranium so strong, what are its potential applications, and what can destroy it. Just a warning, there is going to be a minor spoiler at the end of this video for Avengers Endgame. We'll warn you once again when we get to that point. So vibranium is actually a material not native to our planet. Over a millennia ago, an asteroid crashed to Earth in the region of space that is known as Wakanda. Upon striking the ground, the vibranium asteroid emitted radiation and enriched the soil and made the region incredibly fertile. Vibranium could be mined as a malleable metal. When it was hardened through forging processes, it became a nearly indestructible metal. We're not really sure how the Wakandans first forged vibranium, but we do know that they bonded it with other metals, creating a metallic alloy. Vibranium had many different and useful properties. Let's start with the more normal properties. Vibranium was magnetic. We can see this when Captain America uses a magnetic device on his arm to call on the shield. During the Battle of Sokovia, Ultron used vibranium to create a magnetic field that kept the city of Novigrad in one piece as it flew above the Earth. Vibranium is also a very efficient conductor of electricity. As far as tensile strength goes, vibranium is said to be stronger than steel and a third the weight which is impressive, but not all that rare. We do have metallic compounds that we make here on Earth that can be described in the same way. But what does make vibranium a magical metal is how it interacts with energy. It's completely vibration absorbent. And this seems to differ depending on how the vibranium is forged and with what kind of materials and metals it's combined with. For instance, Captain America's shield was made of either vibranium adamantium alloy or perhaps even pure vibranium. It's not really explained in the MCU. This shield was able to reflect enormous amounts of kinetic energy without harming the individual holding the shield. We've seen the shield take on Thor's hammer, energy beams, whether it's Chitauri or Iron Man's repulsors. Captain America has also used the shield to cushion himself from falls from great heights. And when Captain America throws the shield, that ability to reflect kinetic energy can actually allow the shield to ricochet off of different surfaces. Overall, this property of vibranium makes it perfect for defensive application. However, vibranium has been shown to be able to bond with an incredible amount of materials, including even artificially created organic tissue. Using the power of the Mind Stone, Vision was able to do crazy stuff with his vibranium flesh body. He could increase or decrease his body density to the point where he was basically weightless, and also manipulate the surface of his skin and its appearance, almost as if he was covered in nanites like Tony Stark's Mark 85 armor. Black Panther also used the vibranium armor, but it was most likely vibranium bonded with a more flexible material than Captain America's shield. T'Challa's very talented sister Shuri would further upgrade the Black Panther suit by using nanotechnology to fit the entire suit in a necklace, similar again to Tony Stark's Mark 50 and 85 armor. Shuri was also able to use the vibranium nanites in the suit to absorb energy and accumulate a charge, which then could be manually discharged by the suit's wearer. I get again in the same spot. You're recording. For research purposes. <laughs> Delete that footage. There was a limit to how much energy the suit could absorb, and once it reached that limit, it would discharge the energy back at whatever direction it came from, similar to Captain America's shield. This also leads to another special ability Vibranium had. It could be used as a battery to store energy. The Wakandans used Vibranium as an important power source for their cities, and Ultron used the Vibranium-powered reactor to lift the city of Novigrad many miles into the air. So as we can see, Vibranium's true strength does not lie in its density or its tensile strength, but how it was able to interact with energy. Vibranium's ability to absorb energy, however, is not infinite, and it could be destroyed if enough force was applied to it. For instance, when Iron Man, Thor, and Vision simultaneously attacked Ultron with energy-based attacks, they were able to overwhelm his outer vibranium shell and melt it. However, there are some easier ways to penetrate this super metal. One member of the Black Order known as Corvus Glaive carried a giant glaive that was able to pierce almost any material in existence. In the Marvel comics, the blade was stated to be so sharp that it could slice through atoms. Corvus Glaive on two occasions was able to pierce Vision's vibranium flush skin, which also prevented Vision from phasing. It's possible that Corvus's glaive was made out of vibranium. We've seen Black Panther's claws, which were made out of vibranium, create scratch marks on Captain America's shield. 
As a matter of fact, in the Marvel Comics, Black Panther's claws are actually made out of Vibranium B, a material that was called an anti-metal that could destroy basically any type of metal, even Vibranium. Now we're going to get to the part with spoilers for Avengers Endgame. It's not a major spoiler and doesn't really affect the conclusion of the film or any major plot points, but it still is a spoiler. Okay, so before the Battle of Earth begins between Thanos' army and the Avengers, Captain America goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Thanos. But with just a few repeated blows, Thanos was able to rip chunks out of Captain America's shield until all that was left was a crescent. He was able to do this with his gigantic double-ended buster sword. Now, there's basically no information about Thanos' sword yet, but it's definitely powerful enough to cut Vibranium. Could be that this sword could somehow mitigate the energy-absorbing qualities of Vibranium, or again, it might also be made out of Vibranium. It should be noted in the Marvel comics, there was a sword known as the Infinity Sword, and this was usually used in conjunction with the Infinity Gauntlet, and it was an incredibly powerful sword. But if you look at the Infinity Sword from the comics next to what Thanos is using, they do look quite different. So that's basically all we really know about Vibranium, at least in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. As you can see, it's an incredibly durable material, but it can be destroyed with the proper tools. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie, and you are the protagonist.